speaking. And Michael, welcome. Michael, on mute. There we go. Good morning, Suzanne. How are you? There we go. How are you? Well, we've had quite a, a, a packed morning. Um, we started out this morning with Ryan Cooper at Learning Pool and an introduction to e-learning. Um, he's provided a really good overview, especially for folks who aren't familiar with how robust and fast-paced this industry is. Uh, Gilbert right. Segura gave us some trends in tech and global e-learning and that was followed by John Frederick sharing stories about Skillsoft and some total. Uh, he also shared a lot about adaptability and agility. Uh, we had a panel discussion on industry uh, uh, experts on instructor-led training and e-learning. We had Matt Patterson talking about learning in any language. And as you probably just heard, we had Brian Kropp talking about the social responsibility of learning. So, Pretty wide array of topics, huh? Pretty wide array, indeed. Yeah, who, who would have thought that e-learning extended into all these different areas? And, you know, I'm really excited about your presentation because um, I, in, in some of the prep work for this, I kept confusing augmented reality with virtual reality. And you were, you nicely corrected me at one point and said, but I'm gonna- I will, I will talk about that because it's a confusion. Yeah, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. I know that I'll walk away learning something from this, um, as I'm sure the audience will as well. So Michael uh, Wheeler with Reality Lab is here. Um, Michael, why don't you just kick off real quick, just giving us just a quick background about yourself and Reality Lab. Okay, hi. Um, my name is Michael Wheeler, everyone. Good morning. I'm CEO and founder of Reality Lab. And here at Reality Lab, we conceive, design, and deploy augmented reality experiences to educate, to visualize, and uh, to communicate for business, art, and learning. Great, great. Well, we are excited about your presentation. Uh, so we're going to hand things over to you to share your screen. And for the next roughly 45 minutes, folks, Michael's going to give you all the scoop on augmented reality and virtual reality and why they're not the same thing. Take it away, Michael. Thank you. Are we good? You're good. All right. So again, I'm Michael Wheeler, founder and CEO of Reality Lab. Um, my actual role essentially is as an augmented reality producer and director. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. The best place will be on LinkedIn at uh, J. Michael Wheeler. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've learned so far in telling stories in augmented reality at Reality Lab. Um, augmented reality is an amazing, amazing new medium. Um, it's a new technology, but really what we're going to be talking about is how it is a new medium that we have not had the opportunity to ever work with before. It's brand new technology. It offers us a very, very unique toolbox. And those of us who are part of this uh, industry are really pioneering this new medium. But as Suzanne referred to a little bit earlier, let's clarify the difference between uh, VR and AR. So virtual reality is an artificial digital environment. You wear a headset that covers your eyes entirely and cuts out the real world and the user is placed inside that artificial environment. AR on the other hand, puts the digital into your real world. Uh, and my colleague, Tony Stark, is going to do a little demo for you. Tony always has the latest technologies. So, again, um, augmented reality is this amazing new technology. 
Um, I've been around long enough where I've seen the latest and greatest thing come and go, but there've been several that have been really, truly groundbreaking. Certainly web development is one of them. And I truly believe that augmented reality is another of those groundbreaking technologies that's going to be around for forever. Well, for the next X number of years, that this is the new way we will communicate. Um, but more importantly for us, Augmented reality is an amazing new medium. So I'll be talking about how do we think in this new medium? How do we develop ways of telling the story? And the first one is we really do need to think different. Conceptually as storytellers, we need to recognize that AR provides us a very, very different and new toolbox for communication. It gives us amazingly new possibilities for communicating. We can create, for instance, an AR experience for a museum visitor using their own personal device, their cell phone, their tablet, that expands the museum's exhibit. Or it could actually become the exhibit itself. We can create an AR experience for a surgeon who would wear a hollow lens to visor and overlay a 3D MRI of a patient during an operation. And the surgeon could be using a robot to do the surgery because she might be th thousands of miles away. AR happens in the user's real world. And this presents a whole uh, category of differences that as a 2D designer for screens or for print, for film, we never really had to think about before. For instance, how big is the AR experience? Where do we place that AR experience in the user's real world? Are we creating flying saucers buzzing overhead? Or are we showing the effects of sea level rise on your own home? AR ain't video. This film is incredible that I'm showing you. It's the first film ever shown to the public. It was made by the Lumiere brothers in 1895. And this means that we have been learning to tell story for 125 years. Now this film really was just this film. They put film in the camera, cranked it by hand until the film ran out a voila, that was their movie. There was as yet, as yet no vocabulary for telling story in film. There was no cut, no zoom, no pan, no editing at all. So how did we learn to tell story in film? Well, like with any new technology, we use what is familiar first. To tell their first story in film, they set their camera up on a tripod and filmed an existing stage play because no one yet had written a screenplay. Now I notice the similarities between this first film and the demo that we created for a client. This demo was a conceptual sketch for an AR showroom to help my client present their planned technologies. It communicates cap capabilities, but like the first film, there is no story. We can show the 3D models that we can move them around, we can make them larger, we can walk around the 3D space and, and uh, look at these 3D animated models. But what could a story be? Well, the story could be how the, how the user physically moves through the showroom, what she encounters as she moves from one object to another object. Maybe we wanna show how the company's robotics division interacts with the aerospace group. What about if we physically walk into the spacecraft to see the, the uh, robot piloting that craft? In AR, we really can walk into that spacecraft because AR ain't video. So what's unique to AR? What can you do in this medium that you can't do in any other medium?
AR happens in the user's real world. And this is hugely important because our brains see augmented reality as if it were real objects in our real world. And because of that, we engage our hindbrain, our reptilian brain, to process AR. We process AR as if it were real. When we engage our hindbrain, our attention increases. We engage more and we remember more. AR is spatially aware. As in this project we created for an outdoor art festival, an AR experience is aware of the physical space. It's aware of the ground, of the distances between the objects and the relationship to the user. AR is nonlinear. Because AR happens in real space, the user can move however they choose. We're working on a project for the Massachusetts Gaming Commission and the MCGH to be used within the actual casinos. MCGH staff and visitors will use this AR experience to learn gaming concepts for responsible gaming. Interactions in AR are physical by a touch, point, movement, voice, even by gazing at an AR object. As you can see on, some, on, uh, uh, on this demo, just looking at um, the object will trigger it off. AR can utilize the user's location and real world lighting. Imagine a city planning commission reviewing a planned skyscraper and evaluating the shadows cast from the unbuilt building that fall across the city park in real time while actually standing in the park. Then they can look at that shadow and say, okay, that's today. Let's dial in six months from now and see what the shadows happen. Let's look at it at 10 a.m. six months from now. We're working with a company that's creating a runner's visualization app, which is what I'm showing you here, so that runners can see the course, a marathon course in AR before they run it. This visualization helps the runner train for the course. The AR experience includes hill elevations, coaches notes, and even different road surfaces. Surprisingly, most marathoners have never even seen the marathon course before they run those 26 miles. So this is visualization as part of training. Data can direct AR. GPS, time, tide charts, financial market movements. Exporting data in AR space offers us a new way of analysis because our brains make different connections with things in the real world as opposed to looking at something on a 2D spreadsheet. So we are really pioneers here in developing AR, telling AR stories. Well, your phone really is not ringing. It's been decades since phones have actually had a bell. But cell phones use that term ring because new technology borrows from the past to help people learn and trust new technology. What can we borrow to help introduce AR to our audiences. And we will need to teach our audiences to use AR just as we had to teach them to use a website. Remember the big red buttons labeled click me? Well, we don't need those anymore because people now have learned how to use a website. We need to think spatially when we work in AR. Think like an architect, think like an industrial designer like an exhibit designer. How do we write for a participatory exhibit? Remember, AR happens in the audience's 3D world. We should look at video games. While stage plays 
were the first step for film storytellers, I believe video games is AR's starting point. Video games use technologies that are similar to AR technologies. They can be nonlinear, interactive, they exist in a 3D space, and they subtly teach the player how to play the game. And very importantly, video games tell stories. So we were really the pioneers here in this amazing new medium. Um, I know that if I were around in 1895, I'd be excitedly setting up a moving camera to try to learn to tell story in this new media of film. But luckily I'm um, in 2020, excitedly learning how to tell story in this new media of augmented reality. Hopefully I've encouraged some of you to, to join the pioneering trail with me. Uh, and I thank you very much for taking the time. Do we have questions? I'd love to, to talk to people. Yeah, so thanks, Michael. We really appreciate that presentation. Gave us something all new to think about. Um, so when it comes to augmented reality, I mean, the applications seem endless. Uh, how, how, how do you see this playing into the corporate world in particular? Um, you had some examples there of how it could play, you know, just the example of the marathon, but how do you see the corporate world kind of embracing this technology for learning? Um, just recently, I was talking to uh, some potential new clients who, because trade shows have been canceled, be creating a trade show environment in AR where we can actually show their product. They're in the uh, biomedical cell therapies research and they have actual equipment. Well, we can create that equipment in AR and their potential customers can actually visit that equipment, can open it up, it can actually even show processes, it can show how things come in, we can go inside that uh, apparatus and see what it's actually doing. So we can take we can take the thing to the people rather than having taking people to the to a trade show. So we can present things that especially at, at this point in time are impossible to achieve. And forms of communication, something that we've been using video for, certainly we can get, just make this much, much more robust. It is, as you said, there's no really limit. That's what's so exciting about this. We're learning where to tell uh, this story everywhere. I talk to every kind of client because as soon as they see an AR experience, their first question is, hey, can you do that with this? Because they're expert in their field and they're the content expert and they, they understand immediately the value of taking it into an AR space. So one of the questions that came uh, from the audience is, do you think AR has a role to play in education? For instance, offsetting the negative effects of lots of screen time for younger learners by putting them back into a 3D world. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, we're talking to a couple of museums uh, and one of the museums brings in school children to see their exhibits on the evolution of their city. Uh, and we're talking to about creating an AR version of that to to actually bring those that again bringing those objects in three dimensional space into the the children's home or with the uh, like a remote learning situation. Um, right now, we're using personal devices for the most part. There are millions of these out here. Very, very soon we will be having um, eyeglasses that are AR ready. And once we're hands-free, this is gonna open up just a huge, huge new universe for AR. Because we will be able to actually manipulate three-dimensional objects in augmented reality space with eyewear that tracks our hands and knows where we are. 
So this is one of the things that's really intriguing is how do we create those interactions? How do we say this is something that you can manipulate in space without it having to be a big red button, right? That says click me. Yeah, I, I found that interesting that you were, you used a couple of examples, but the one, you know, when, when websites and the internet became uh, popular, we did, we had to tell people, click me, we had to tell them what to do. And now we don't have to do that. So it is interesting yeah. how learning does migrate for sure. Another question that came in is when you make an AR application that has a 3D visualization, but doesn't interact with the outside world like the marathon, what value do you see in doing this over virtual reality? If you're looking at the same objects in VR versus AR, is that the question? Mm -hmm. um, It depends on the application. Um, I th personally, I'm, I'm much more interested in bringing things into our real world space. They can be shared. We can look at things together. Um, there is a whole different relationship to, for instance, in education again, in medical and uh, uh, med school, for instance, we can we can have a augmented reality heart in three dimensional space that's actually functioning. We can go inside it and see things inside that heart. Um, there's just something to me that's much more appealing to have things happen in my real world than for me to go into a, uh, an artificial environment. Kind of, I think with VR, you're, I think it feels a little more segregated or closed off from those around you, right? Yes, very much so. Because yeah. you are, you're totally, you're totally closed into your artificial environment. Yeah. And there's definitely uh, great applications to use VR. We're just not interested in, in pursuing that. We think that AR has a much broader reach much broader usage and appeal. Yeah, and, and, and again, before your talk, not knowing the difference between VR and AR, um, I certainly didn't understand that, but you certainly provided some good perspective on that. Um, another uh, so question that came in was, how do you see this becoming more mainstreamed? I feel that we're in the beginning stages currently and have been for a while. Has there been an increase in interest since COVID? Very much so, very much so. Again, the example I gave earlier of trade shows being shut down, how do, how do the sales people talk to their customers if they can't talk to their customers in, in real life? How do they show them their product? How do they do a demo? of a real product come in let's let's look at how this works um referring back to the uh, cell therapies research their equipment actually is fairly large and one of the things that we can do in ar is a prospective purchaser can take that piece of equipment and actually place it in their own laboratory to see where it would go to see if it would fit to configure industrial spaces with AR um, artifacts. So anything, I mean, music, talking to several museums, how do you bring an exhibit to someone's backyard if you can't actually go to the museum? Um, also different layerings of information. For instance, in a, in the, in a museum setting, we can actually have an interaction with the artist who created the artwork that you're looking at and understand more of what motivated that artist, what that artist is trying to talk to, and then give references. They like say, well, you know, I, this color came from this flower that I saw. And we can actually uh, bring that real flower in three-dimensional space into the exhibit. And what is, uh, hold on a minute, there's another question that just came in, let's see. Um, well, that was just a comment. 
let's see. Uh, when is AR more appropriate than VR or vice versa? If you want to see the real world, for instance, I'm working on a on an app that allows you to stand in front of your own home and visualize what sea level rise will do to your home. So you'll be able, you'll take your device and you'll dial up the year 2050 and utilizing really real data from NOAA and real tide charts and real information, we can show sea level rising at your house. In VR, you can't do that because your house can't get into the VR, right? So by standing in front of my own, my own home or my office, I can stand there and dial this in and then see what the see, see the actual water rising on my front porch. Okay. And because we and because we look at AR space in, in as real world space, we completely forget about the fact that we're looking through our phones at some point. I gave a demo and uh, of the uh, Massachusetts Gaming Commission to somebody and they were looking at it and I said, you know, you can actually touch on those little info flags and there's more information. And he reached out and tried to touch in real space while holding the phone. We just instantly lose that disconnect that we're not looking at the real world. Yeah. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. All right, so we've got a few more questions and we're gonna, we're gonna have those follow you over to the uh, live after party room. Uh, so we're gonna let folks, give folks information on that. But thank you so much, Michael, for joining us. Great. It has certainly thank been you. a pleasure to learn more about AR. And um, I, I am sure you'll be hearing from more folks after this conference, because that was a, right. a pretty interesting conversation. So let's see, for those folks who would like to join Michael for some more one-on-one -on -one, uh, questions and answers, 